Pretty much who's been wondering how I put one of these devices together. I actually used a little solder page, a solder paste syringe like this, so that I can deposit little little droplets of solder, like you see right or solder paste right there on each of the pads as a starting point. It's a little tedious, but mostly because of the I use a fine enough nozzle and I have to bear down a fair amount of pressure on it to actually get the this the paste to it to, to come out. But it's really not that hard to master. It doesn't really require that much accuracy, as you'll see in a little bit. Here's the board after I've applied all this solder paste to it. You can see it's not particularly elegant. It just globs of little solder paste in various places. You don't have to be too precise because the board, each of the uh, pads is surrounded by what's called a, a solder mass that keeps the solder from bridging between things. And in most cases, that'll work out just fine. The next step is to so they used to use um, tweeter, tweezers to loosely uh, place all the parts, and I'll show part of that taking place. The first part I'm going to put down is this, the three uh, dual Schmidt buffers that form the level shifting circuitry. S&D parts come in little strips like this with a little plastic cover or like this. They're designed for automated equipment, but you just pull back the strip and little parts will just sort of fall out like that. Be careful to put the part, the strip back where, where in a nice storage place, a bag that's labeled because it's very hard to identify these parts just from looking at them. The other problem is you have to find pin one on them. I have a little magnifying glass here that I use to kind of zoom in on them and tell me which part it is to move the camera for a second to figure that out. Okay, so I've got all three parts lined up with pin one pointing in this direction. So I just pick a part up and stick it right down on top of the area where it's supposed to go. As you'll see later, you don't have to be too precise about this because the water, it's the, the, the solder itself will tend to suck the part into position. Although, just to be sure, I usually use a magnifying glass when I'm all done and go back and tweak anything in position. The next step is to pull out the other parts. Next, I'll put on some of the capacitors. They also come in little little strips like this. Uh, capacitors you have to be careful about because they're not marked in any way. Uh, so I keep, I mark the strip on the back like this. This is a 0.1 16 volt capacitor that's going to go in two places on here. And likewise I just pull the strip back and let one fall out, let two fall out. As I say, there's no markings on the thing so uh, once you've dumped them out of here you can't tell one from another. So one goes right there, and another one goes right there. Then I also have 0.1 microfarad capacitors, and I'm put three of those down. So I'll take three of those out. There's two, and there's a third. One goes right there, and uh, one goes right there, and one goes right over here. Now I have the current limit resistor here for the LED, the diode I mentioned earlier. It goes right up in the top. And then the LED itself, these are really a pain because there's two ways to put them in, and it's very hard to tell from inspection. I usually will flip the tweezers over and look at the bottom side where we can see the identifier. I've already done that one here and I know this is the correct way to put it in, but those are probably the, my experience is the hardest, hardest components to put in. Lastly, I've got to look up the, um, the voltage regulator. This is a 3 volt, 3.3 volt regulator. And uh, it's upside down, so I usually flip it a few times and it will pop right side up. And I can, oops, I'm not seeing it here, it's still upside down. There we go. And it goes right in there, if you didn't see it off camera. Then I'm going to take a moment to look everything over and get the magnifying glass out. Um, so here's where the real magic happens. I have, this is my little heat wave gun, or heat gun. It's an, um, 8032A++ by a company whose name I can't pronounce, but uh, you look it up by that name. 
it's nice and portable. I don't like the big desk mounted units. This is portable. I can pack it around and kind of use it anywhere I want to. So I'll turn it on and then I'll set it up to uh, use these buttons here. I can set it up to about 300 degrees C because of the dilution in the air here. I usually set it a little bit higher than it needs to be. Then I'll pump the air speed up a little bit. About there. You don't want to get it so high that you risk actually blowing the parts away. Let me see if I can get the camera position so you can watch this. That's kind of that's kind of cool. If you put the heat gun over a part like this, and it takes a few minutes for the board to to actually warm up, and then the, we get it there in the flow temperature. Um, Using the first few components you saw it or take a little bit longer. I don't know whether you'll be able to see this on camera or not. I can barely see it from here without my magnifying glass. But at some point the solder down there will liquefy and you see it flow around. And there it goes on one side. Sometimes you have to wait a little bit longer for the or on the ground side for the solder to flow. So I'll dwell a little bit more. You can kind of tell by how Okay, looks like this. I'll kind of come back over one more time just to make sure. And then I'll move on down to the capacitors and the voltage regulator. Now this time they're usually hot to trot. You'll see them almost pull themselves into position and line themselves up because of the, uh, the surface tension from the solder. That's one of the things I really like about this technique. Again, that one flowed relatively quickly. Then finally, we got to heat this whole thing. You can't see that because of the cord is in the way. Sorry about that. And then now I just uh, turn it off and let it cool down. I actually like to solder on top of this little cardboard box here. For some reason, the cardboard is relatively unaffected by the heat. Um, and it doesn't soak a lot of heat away from the um, the circuit board. It lets it heat up correctly. I've tried using ceramic tiles and other things like that, but just a leftover cardboard box sometimes helps. The board itself is now really hot, so I'll consider it down on the surface here, and that'll let the, some of the heat work away into the into the surface there. And now's a good time to get out the old eye loop and go over everything and make certain it's good. If not, I can fire up the heat gun again and. And I um, hit it again. So that's step one, the more unconventional part of the process if you're not familiar with surface mount soldering. Um, next step is I'll be able to plug in a power source here once it all cools down and make sure the LED lights up. That at least proves that there's not a short on the circuit side and that the power connected down here was was made correctly. The, the solder flowed to all those little, little pins that you can see down in there. That's the tricky part. Sometimes you'll get a, you'll get a solder, solder bridge and put this all together. And a really simple way to fix that is just to take some of this um, uh, solder wick and just stick it across the, uh, the part that you think is bridged like this and then touch the solder around behind it and press it against the pads. It'll work away any of the excess solder pretty easily. Some people's techniques are that they just glob solder all over the parts and get them to in their position and they always get shorts and they go back and they clean it up after the fact but I kind of like to use the use the solder paste here this is a this is a no clean solder paste a 6370 um, basically leaded solder that's I don't even try on the on the bench to work with the lead free solder if you're if you're con concerned about all that this this lower melting point just makes the whole process a lot easier and a lot more straightforward to work with okay the board's cooled down so I'm going to plug in the a little battery power source here and click the on switch and hopefully you'll see a blue LED there. Yep. Okay, so stage one, not exactly completely checked out because we still could have a problem with the level shifting circuitry, but um, it's a good assembly. It didn't really take all that long. The other essential tool I forgot to mention is this Luxo magnifier with uh, LED lights 
underneath. I like the LED lights because they're a lot cooler than using the old fluorescent ties. But using a tool like this lets me get in there and work quite quite um, closely with uh, everything and really simplifies um, the problem when you have eyes as old as mine.